Welcome back to the 2015 World's Group Stage and our final match, AHQ Esports taking on the hometown favorites, Fnatic. Now this is a rematch from MSI that AHQ won handily with one key difference today. Reckless is in the bot lane. Yeah, when they played at MSI, they exploited Steel back in the bot lane. Mountain was able to get off a lot of ganks on the Urgot early. And now with this guy down there, he is not as exploitable of a bottom laner. He has been playing rather aggressive lately towards the end of the split, but he is nowhere on the level that Steelback was. Steelback averaged down in CS, and they had to come back from that deficit. This, not the same bot lane. He's right. also rocking a sweet ponytail. Yeah. Uh, Mini warrior ponytail. Braid. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 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 that was so well timed. You can put your head back up, Reckless. Anyway, back to business. Ah, uh, yeah, and beyond that, you know, they've got a great bottom line, but the rest of the team kept evolving, and I think that their mid laner for Biven has turned into an absolute monster. This guy has potential out the wazoo. Like, he could go anywhere he wants, and, you know, we saw a rookie in that game performing very well, getting a solo queue with Teleport Echo. This guy went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and came out ahead. Yeah, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Forbidden by saying this, but he was unarguably benefited by getting an overwhelming number of Victor and Azir picks over the course of the summer season because of a lot of the bans that were going against Hooney. So he benefited. But I agree, he's a much better mid laner now than he was at MSI. And even then he performed very well. This guy ha is developing wonderfully in his first year of professional competition. Yeah, he, even in Challenger back in the day, Cloud9 Eclipse, H2K, he was a, a player who had all of this potential to live up to, very young, large champion pool, and able to pick things up so quickly. So Febibin, I think, was an amazing pickup for Fnatic in retrospect, and he's only just grown, and he hasn't shown us just even the tiniest bit of what he's capable of doing. This guy has years left in his career, in my opinion. Right. Well, now, of course, taking a look at their opponent's AHQ, what happened day one versus Cloud9? Uh, they played a very all-or-nothing composition. They wanted to set up a split push. They put the Rengar there to start feeding their solo laners. It's risky to do that because they had no wave clear. Now, C9 set up a heavy siege composition, so once Mountain's Rengar totally failed to do pretty much anything, they were set up just to siege. There was nothing H could, Q could do, very short game. Uh, when you get those two kind of compositions going against each other, it's going to be feast or famine on either side. If Rengar had worked, we could have easily seen a very quick game with AHQ split pushing and solo killing people in the side lanes. So AHQ uh, needs to mix it up. I just think Mountain needs to calm oh. down, play a, <laughs> play a champion he's actually played in the last season and the last split, and we'll see what they offer from there. Yeah, it was a very slow, painful process for them. They, it felt like AHQ was learning during the game, but every death was a lesson. It's 300 gold, 600 gold. <laughs> We're learning two lessons here. What does Vagar E do? What does that do to us? How many stuns? What does my R do as Rengar? It took them <laughs> so long to figure it out and they didn't have it even close to down by the end of the game. And that's what cost AHQ. I want to see them go back to comfort. I also feel like those teams were backwards, like Cloud9 get their bottom lane an advantage and transition into the mid lane. Whereas uh, on the side of AHQ, they try and give everything down to Arn and Arn never got rolling. Nothing ever transitioned to that guy had a second item QSS and was doing no damage whatsoever. So looking for him to step up in this game, really get going. All right. Well, that's what we're looking for. Last time today, guys, got to put you in the hot seat. Who are we looking at to take this game? Uh, I think that Fnatic are phenomenal at the moment. I think that they can go very deep in this tournament. I think they'll win the game. Yeah, I don't think there's any argument. Even if it was the same AHQ that we saw at MSI, I would still pick Fnatic here. Uh, I especially when we've seen everybody in this group now, and we've seen Cloud9, we've seen IG, I'd be actually quite surprised at this stage if Fnatic didn't 6-0. Yep. Yeah, I agree as well. I think Fnatic is a superior team right now, working as a team and individually across the board. I think Febivin, we've talked about him a lot. I think he holds up against the door very handily and has more control mages up his sleeve too. So he's flexible and champion select too. All right, much more in line this time around. We'll see if the home, hometown favorites can bring it home. We're going to throw it over to our casters for the play-by-play. -play. On the way, Reckless's short time at Worlds last year has taught him to take it one game at a time. I think last year we were actually quite confident. Uh, I'm not sure if it was because it was my first Worlds and that we were, even though we finished second uh, in, in our region, we were kind of still somewhat dominant. Uh, therefore, going into Worlds, I wasn't really sure actually what to expect because it was my first one. And I think I was maybe a bit even overconfident. I was expecting to get certain things, which we which didn't happen. Therefore, I was just kind of heartbroken at times, even when the group wasn't over yet. Um, so I would say this year I'm kind of 
more down to earth perhaps. I take game by game, day by day, and then we'll see, see where we go from there. And welcome back, guys, once again. It's our final game of the day here on day three of the 2015 World Championships. AHQ versus Fnatic. It's time to check, up the check out the lineups, guys. Good. I am so psyched about this one. Four, AHQ. These guys really need to step up. Got taken down earlier. In the top lane, it's Ziv, of course. Down in the jungle, it is Mountain. In the mid lane, it's the door. West door at ADC, it's on. And down at Coach, or at support, it's Albus. How could I skip the support? And it's Coach, it's backstairs. Yeah, don't forget them. And obviously, they're going up against the favorite here in this group, Fnatic. And many, many crowd favorite here is overall. We hear them already. Hooney will be starting in the top lane here. Definitely crowd favorite. Jungle, Raynor, obviously. Mid laner, a talent. Alice that's touched on it. Favorite been performing very well. Reckless, back to Fnatic right here, performing incredibly well. And then Yellow Star, the French guy here, but all under the mighty coaching of Daylor. Fantastic job that he's done with his, honestly, very rookie lineup. Yeah, but such a good start for them against IG day one. They need to be able to keep that up because of the stumbles of IG. It's the 6-0 just predicted. I wonder how much of that's going into their heads. Oh, maybe this is easy now. They have to keep focused. Yeah, IG will be watching this, and they want they want Fnatic to win this. Yeah, I mean, this is insane, right? Fnatic coming in, number one in Europe, looking so good here already in Worlds. And this crowd, I mean, they've got the hometown hype going for sure. This crowd has never been louder than it is right now for this Fnatic team. Listen to these guys. I think we know who they're cheering for. Yeah, Yellowstone. Yeah, Proud yeah, favorite here. Definitely. If there's any oh. player for me that deserves a deep run in the tournament, it has to be Yellowstone. The amount of things that he has given up personally just to uh, reach this amount of success, because he has been at every World Finals, consistently high performer in multiple roles overall, and just what he brings to the table as a player, regardless of mechanics, we often call it like intangibles, whether you actually <laughs> believe in that or not. I really think he deserves to be here, and I hope he gets a deep run. Well, here we go, guys. Picks and bans for AHQ versus Fnatic Azir. Banned out against Febivim right off the bat. There's a Gangplank ban from Fnatic. Yeah, Fnatic had quite a unique draft in day one. Hecarim top lane and Shen support, so a bit of a throwback to champions that weren't necessarily seen on the playoff patches. But what's interesting about this is AHQ is a team that had the most time off of any team at Worlds before arriving here. And they have not appeared to adapt well to the new game. So I wonder if it was a stubbornness on their part or if they just need a little while to warm up. They'll definitely need to look for a comfortable pick on Mount. That is the way a lot of teams think Fnatic can potentially crack. Get a stronger jungler on your jungler player and then try and shut down Rainover, who is actually the support for all these lanes. Once you get him down, then you can start tackling that wealth of individual talent in all these lanes. Well, and Elise can do exactly that. A very strong first pick for AHQ. Yep. Does leave a lot of power picks open for Fnatic, though. Elise was banned by Cloud9 against AHQ, so this is a logical <laughs> pick. <laughs> Look at Rainover. Look at Rainover. It's a bit troll. A bit troll. I'll show you how it's done, kid. Get in the opponent's mind. Oh, yes. Remind him. Now, very often, very often we see some juggernauts here locked in. You know, Darius being picked up early rotation. Is Fnatic going to do the same thing? I mean, we saw Darius win in our last game, right? But the win wasn't because of Darius. I feel like we haven't seen really any wins where you could say the win was because of that Darius. Looks like they're going to take it anyway, though. Huni is a pretty strong yeah. top laner. He can still be a cog in the machine. And this is yeah. one of the first times in the draft phase already we're seeing some already inherent built-in synergy with the yep. Darius as far as team fights, the assistance for him to get involved is aided by the Sivir. Also, Sivir, generally a passive laner that can get through most matchups by just farming, which means you can redirect your attention from the game to the Darius. And you touched about that earlier, Jan, Very how true. Darius gets pick priority but doesn't get game priority. Fnatic already looking to do that with this draft. Meanwhile, HQ thinking about picking up that Gnar. It really feels like Gnar is the default pick against Darius. It is. I mean, he's got the range. You can kite it a little bit. You can harass Darius a lot in range, despite that little heal off the Q. Not too surprising to see that picked up. No more Renekton, apparently. Gnar's the go-to pick for uh, everybody here, outside of SKT, anyway. Not everyone can be Marin, unfortunately. <laughs> that is true. Jinx? Possibly picked up as well. Looks like the timer will count down, and yep, it will be Nar and Jinx locked in. I like it. 
with Cocoon and Traps available, you already have a decent amount of peel to keep that Darius away from your team. Jinx, Hyper Carry necessary. I do think teams, whenever they pick an Anar into Darius matchup, they actually lock in too much split push. Like we saw IG2, they went for like a 1-3-1, one, one, and it seems to be incredibly hard to play at the world stage. So more teamfight oriented picks could be big. Oh, Febivin teasing yeah. a Riven pick here. Before he became a professional player, Febivin was actually uh, a very big Riven main. Obviously his real name is Fabian, Riven, Febivin, that's pros ah, potentially okay. where it comes from. He was. Uh, Riven one trick pony. He may actually end up playing a Vega here. We'll see, but will they actually even pick? I a feel like the right majority now? of these hovers are just taunting a yeah. few about their game yesterday. True, that's actually true. <laughs> the Vega was played against them. No. <laughs> yeah. I think we've we've deducted the champs. Like this is why we don't talk about hovers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we can because it's all about yeah. the mind games, right? The hovers front. See, the hovers in Korea are pretty much there to just troll the Korean cast Cloud Templar. Oh, and Jungle Olaf in. as well. Uh, Give it a second. Maybe. Yeah, rain over special. All right. Rain over special, it's what his, he was the pretty much only person to play Olaf Jungle. Uh, already the inbuilt synergy with the Sivir, so they're building very heavily around this. Well, Jinx is going to have a lot of people running out of that. She's going to have a hard time stopping. Actually, wasn't too big of a fan traditionally of Annie as a support, but her value seems to be pretty high in this World Finals where she just provides instant hard CC. Yeah. That's what a lot of these teams have been looking for. A lot of these fights could go different ways. Could still see no Kalista actually this game. Well, you're trying yeah. to get on the Jinx, right? And I mean, yeah. where you've already got the top lane picked, you can't go to like a Malphite or anything right now unless it's a rare Malphite support. So this makes sense. Put Olaf in the jungle. Wouldn't mind to see a Morgana here, honestly, coming out of the Albus here. Black shielding that Jinx, keeping her alive. No axes, no Annie stun available. Kiting those uh, Juggernauts. Whoa, oh boy. Fizz, but the Tom Kench is the seafood duo. Unbench the Kench. by HQ. Unbench the Kench. <laughs> yeah, Westar goes back to Fizz yet again. Uh, it's expected it was banned against him almost every game during the regular season in the LMS. It was countered yesterday by a nice pushing comp, and Fnatic has been spectacular notations. If Febivent picks a somewhat safe, long-range, wave-clearing mage, it would fit right into what Fnatic wants to do. Zillion would be an unlikely choice, but something that perhaps could handle that Fizz. You know, I mean, the Vagar. We saw it work really well into the Fizz last time. You know, is Febivin willing to play that kind of champion? Does the composition really require a Vega? He has so many more options that he could play. Vega is tricky. Westor obviously yeah. has learned his lesson. Hope he knows that matchup a little better. Feels like a victor game. I, I agree. Any, any game feels like a victor uh, game. What about a Yorick game, guys? No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I was going to say. Huh? Oriana makes a bit more, more move speed. There we go. All and right. So more shielding for assassination. Yep. Very well-rounded composition here from Fnatic. Yeah. The weaknesses of Olaf and Darius as champions, obviously, that they can't get to their targets. Double movement speed steroids here, a support that can lock the enemy in place. Obviously, Arn yeah. will rely on being eaten up by his support. Save him out of that damage. Yeah, and I'm thinking about the way AHQ wants to play this game. They need Ziv and Westor actually to have pretty strong laning phases because they need split put pressure in order to get flanks for some team fights. I really do wonder, Fnatic is such a good team as a unit with all the move speeds synergizing with the two champions that want to just run straight at the enemy. Also, just look at the innate amount of wave clear that Fnatic has ready. Even Olaf with a couple axes puts a wave lower. Orianna instantly clear wave. Saver instantly clear wave. The hardest part for uh, HQ will here will be their wave clear. AoE Rockets from Jinx is their best wave clear tool. That is really rough if you get any amount of gold behind. Now we saw the Bard from IG. Now we're seeing the Tom Kench from <laughs> AHQ. Are one of these slightly more unorthodox support picks gonna work? Obviously the Bard didn't do it. We'll see if Tom Kench can pull some slack, pull the line, I would say. If you had Tom yeah. Kench on the line, he'd probably get away with it. Krepper, have you saved any like Tom Kench jokes? Uh, I, there's a bunch <laughs> of uh, um, Bench to Kench memes, but we're gonna let Twitch uh, fill that one up, hopefully. All right, well guys. If you are on your phone, you want to use that Twitter hashtag AHQ win if you think they can take it, or hashtag FNC win over to at Lol Esports. Let us know what you think as we move into our final game of the day here on day three of the League of Legends 2015 World Championships AHQ versus Fnatic. It's time to get onto the rip. If you're unfamiliar with Tom Kench overall, his job is really to be a pesky nuisance and peel, to stop people from getting to your AD carry if they do. Then disengage, eat up the AD carry. We may see in a, another aggressive 5v5 here though. Yellow start instantly charging up that stun. He is one of, when played well, he is one of the most annoying supports yeah. to play against. It's almost like uh, 
the way it feels when trying to kill a support when they have a Callista on their team is like trying to kill an AD carry when they have a Tom Kench on their team. You yep. go farm, Kench eats it, has all this great health, you feel like you're wasting your time trying to hit him, then the AD carry gets spit out in the other direction. So is it dinner time for AHQ? I wonder, a little bit of wards going down, some very, very safe fanning going on from both of these teams here at level one. Mountains, if those guys really need to snowball their matchup, really get that top lane ahead. Mountain needs to get some aggressive ganks off. Olaf, no flash. If you catch him in the jungle early when he's low, you definitely can kill him. Yeah, a little bit of a slightly late invade, but again, you know, no real deep wards for either of these teams. As it looks like we will have a bit of a jungle follow early on. Do you think they're going to send Huni down to the bot lane right away, or is he going to stick with Rain over for a bit? Pretty much every team starts with at least a two camp double jungle hmm. as far as top laner and jungler go. Even if there's no lane swap, it's more efficient because the junglers save damage and the top laner is able to go to lane with uh, extra potions. Look what Reckless and Yellow are doing. Though. They're not going for Krugs. They may secure a third quadrant here for Fnatic overall the way this lane swap could play out because well, HQ format starting in their safest quadrant overall. It's true, HQ is getting mind gamed a little bit here. Depends which... No, nope, Fnatic's not going for a camp at all. They were they were expecting a start in that quadrant yeah. and were looking to harass instead wow. of just starting on a grump. That could have been really huge. And then obviously, Rainover and Huni are just going to continue double jungling. No reason for Huni to go to that bot lane when he hit so many camps available. Yellowstar is just on scouting duty. That's all he needs to do. Find yeah. and locate the enemy jungler. Now he's potentially counter ganking some level oh. two cheese here in the mid lane. Good try for this early gank here. He's got that stun loaded up. Could go for a flash W or something. Or just walk in and try to get the flash out of Westor. Rain over. Coming over too. Westor already getting very low. He hits level two. Yeah, Westor smartly playing towards his strong side of the map where all his allies are, so would have been really hard for the Yellow Star to actually get something on that. But I love what Fnatic did right here, Ooh. shortcutting Whoa. the double jungle. And it's going to be a dragon, but the tempo loss for AHQ is huge this here. As so far big. as gold and experience goes, Fnatic is going to have a really big edge on this, as well as they're going to get uh, control of three of the major buffs. They can even, like, they can send Huni top right now, push in the, the tower relatively delayed. Rainover can return to his jungle with all three camps and the Skull Trap still available. Whereas at the opposite, opposite side of the map, there's only a Grump left for HQ to take, so very big tempo swing. Yeah, early dragon taken by HQ, but Fnatic responding with a lot of pressure here in this top lane. We'll see if HQ can get any sort of semblance of equalization down in bot. It's going to take a long time. Yeah, I've seen these trades go a lot of different ways. If a team is snowballing really heavily, uh, it almost adds insult to injury to the team that didn't take the dragon, but that's after they make a mistake. If Fnatic plays this properly, they will hold an advantage, and by the time the next dragon comes around, they would be able to capitalize on that advantage, just due to the extra golden experience they gained while the three-minute dragon was being taken by HP. Last game, Huni forgot to take that tower down. If you remember, he left it on a couple of hits. This time, they're guaranteeing, they're sharing the gold too. <laughs> Reckless needed a little more gold for his item. Huni, that wave is being bound, so he can safely farm. He's not going to be punished in this Gnar, Darius matchup, as many top laners have so far. Yeah, and all of this with the bottom turret for Fnatic really not taking any damage. Oh, the Q stops Reckles, or Reckless, <laughs> for going back. Reckles. Technically, it is written Reckles. Yeah, it is. You spell it fanatically. All the way back in his first major tournament, IPL 5, uh -huh. the Reckles and Reckless debate was in full <laughs> swing. I still want to call him Reckles, that's but I've just gotten so used to calling him Reckless because he says so. That's one of the things about esports is that you you don't really always know how these guys are going to pronounce their names. Like, try casting in Korea sometimes, man. We had Gorilla go from Gorilla to Galera back to Gorilla again. <laughs> expression, we're like, all right, it's misspelled expression. We're just going, no, he wants to be called expression. It's not easy sometimes. Actually, do you do and Do you call him A-N or N? You just got to go with it. If there was an H, I'd call him on more. Interesting, though. The way uh, HQ interrupted them completely changed oh. their reckless state. Huni went around. Oh. Rainover right there. Actually, Zip comes He's back dead. in. First that flash, he's caught. First blood goes to Rainover. Whoops. That was huge. And specifically, credit to Huni for getting the apprehend yeah. during the Nar jump. We've seen so many Darius Nar ganks be attempted where that apprehend does not catch the Nar. But Huni time. was able to do it. HQ felt comfortable because Albus canceled two backs and they thought Huni was actually being swapped down to the bot lane, but they actually just pathed it around together with Rainover. Lulled Ziv into a fake sense of security and then punished that. That was actually a very creative play there by Fnatic. 
Meanwhile on the bot lane, on and call him whatever you want. He's just freezing, not putting any pressure. Uh -oh, uh -oh, a four uh -oh. man roam. Westor takes the south door out of the mid lane to try to escape with his life. Won't need to burn any summoners, it looks like. It's an That's, effective door to take. It is. Yeah, here. I do have to mention that the AD carry priority for AHQ is really huge. And the fact that they forfeited so much and still not gained a major advantage for and over Reckless is disastrous for AHQ. As far as AD carry CS differential at 10 minutes goes, AHQ had the highest of any team at Worlds with over 10 coming into this. And Reckless is actually a pretty conservative laner. So if AHQ was going to win something, it would have been that AD carry matchup. But with the way these lane swaps are being engineered, Fnatic is just winning across all fronts. Uni hasn't gotten that much CS though. He's still even CS here with Ziv overall because of the way a lot more gold, though, play in a globally, I mean, yeah, obviously he was part of that first spot, so he's definitely yeah. in a comfortable position. Overall, just due to the level one start, HQ, they did something you really can't afford to do on the world stage, which is a single quarter and start jungle with no backup plan. Jeez, it's a it's like a 2k gold lead already for Fnatic at just under seven minutes. Can't really go too much worse for AHQ. They're going to need to really play it out perfectly for like the le next 10 minutes at least if they want to come back in this game. Yeah, and at the very least, push down the turret. They're leaving yeah. it up. They're not getting any gold influx to them right now. And they're stuck in these defensive lanes. Maybe their hope is that the next time Fnatic tries to push a turret, they can win a fight because they're still technically CSing pretty well as a team. They're just losing out hugely on objective goal. I mean, CSing well as a team, but I mean, that, that means they're keeping up. You know, they're not ahead. They need turrets. They need that gold. I agree. Fabvin getting a little bit more for himself. And gonna grab that blue buff too. This is the part of matchup where he actually can start pushing out pretty aggressively. He can sustain push from the Oriana. Forcing Fist to wait clear under his turret obviously keeps him down. He does just bring the ignite to the table. Kevin will need a clutch cleanse there to get out of that. A rain over getting a ward down in the enemy jungle too. I mean, Febivin is so extremely safe in this lane right now. The crowd is cheering for every successful Febivin CS. <laughs> Yeah, he got one. It's more gold. Is he going to do it? Two at once here. It's a possibility. Whoa! Oh, so good. Right. Mesmerize that feather. <laughs> Faker who? Watch him see us. <laughs> I love this crowd. This is, I, I think this is actually the best crowd I've ever seen live. These guys are so excited about everything. I Most, love it. Mostly instigated by uh, the in-house casters here, Ships and Y. The band of Merriman that they brought to the table too. So they fantastic so audience good. here. Every time I've come to France for an event, it has been amazing. I've done it, I think this is my fourth time here and the crowds are just always mind blowing. Need some more Panthe, you know. But we'll get to that potentially. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hootie now CSC on the tower. Actually doing a phenomenal <laughs> job as the crowd indicates. Let's go up to single uh, one. They're actually getting most of the CS. Oh! Oh, uh, when you're fired. Can I hire this crowd when I'm playing solo queue? I need those kinds of cheers. Well, Reckless might be in a little bit of trouble. No, just spell fields is right. Right through the flame choppers, takes some damage. Oh, the rocket misses! This is very deceptive for the players, because every time they hear a cheer, they're like, what are they cheering for? Whoa, Ziff pulled in. He doesn't have his flash. He needs to be careful here, trying to get away. Activates that hyper rain over, being chased back by Westor, who comes up. Rooney back under turret now, so a little bit too much pressure to go after that kill. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the West Door roams. Unless that pays off, it's going to be heavily punished. Febivin already with pressure in the mid lane. Going to take a chunk out of that mid turret. Big chunk. HQ has to answer with at least a turret at the top. Yeah, roaming always brings a very large opportunity cost, especially if the enemy laner isn't even chunked out. Febivin full resources can just continuously keep shoving here. Reckless getting poked by, pulled by uh -oh. these zaps. Hooney taking some damage. Mountain doing it, trying to get that execute. Zip trying to get there. Hooney in big trouble at Mountain. Gets the kill. This is something we've seen Huni do before. When his team is slightly ahead, he just doesn't quite respect his opponents just enough and ends up dying on yep. another very predictable manner. So Huni needs to shore that up in his play. Fantastic 1v1 clutch player, but then these slow, very predictable regangs, he yep. sometimes still falls to. One of the only ways that AHQ comes back in that is if Huni gives up a kill. And that's what that was. It was a giving of a kill. Very true. Because it was very easy to concede that turret, and the team would still come out ahead now. He's going to be able to catch up in a lot of CS because of the wave that he's getting at the moment, but still, I mean, he needs to be careful that he doesn't fall too far behind again. And just look at mid lane, 30 CS. That was the cost of that roam, so you really want to get that value somehow. Also, that mid lane tower, that's some hidden Ooh. cost. Once that one falls, that swings the game open, especially wave clear mids against now wave clear mids with the tower down. Gives you so much pressure advantage. Deep vision becomes even easier to place.
Cooney is pushed up really far. Oh, over the wall, goes for the execute, gets dodged by the rappel. He's coming back down. Oh, doesn't hit him with the E, and Hooney in a little bit of trouble. Teleport coming in, top catch, trying to join the fray. Hooney gets taken down by Mountain yet again, but it's a kill on both sides as Rainover comes in. He's in danger of getting eaten here, though. He's got the two blue mouse knocked against the wall. And Albus comes in to help it out, getting bloodthirsty, picks him up, spit him out. Albus getting the kill. He steals the kill. Why would Albus yeah, steal if the you kill? Have to, you have to. If you have the stacks, you have to press W. You, look, you yep. even saw him hesitate. Dude, do I do you go know? For it? Did you know Tom Kench can eat people? Why would you not ever do that? Why would you ever not do that? Because Ziv doesn't eat kills on a top lane, clearly. Yeah, Tom <laughs> Kench does. You got that right. Yeah. You're at, I am wrong. Tom with Kench that analyst, is analyst. technically. A top laner too. Maybe he can just <laughs> roll swap. You know, Nar support. Tom Kench. Top See, people are. Out. I think people are mistaking his name. It's Tom Kench. It's not Top Kench. He's not meant to go in the top lane. I don't care what you say. <laughs> support. <laughs> I, we claim him. We kills. supports claim Tom Kench. Either way, that's a couple of kills that Hooney's given up. Yeah. And it's sneaking AHQ back into this game. The mid lane is down, so the pressure should actually be near its higher point for Fnatic. And the grouping is closing in around this Dragon number two as well as bot lane turret. But Hooney is still in the top lane without a teleport, and it actually gives Dragon control to AHQ. In all seriousness, that was a... As we see Raynor being challenged here now in his own jungle. Like, I, I could almost call it a tilty play from Hooney. He dies, and he wants to teleport deep to just get a counterplay 2v1 with no backup. Yes, Raynor comes in, but then the Abyssal Voyage brings in Tom Kench, and... It wasn't necessary, not at all. And this is not really the style we've seen Fnatic develop. So calculated, meticulous. That's the way they've played in Summer Split. This seen more Fnatic of Spring. Rash, you know, all in. We really trying to mechanically outplay people instead. Yeah, they need to calm down. They need to calm down, and it seems like that's kind of what they're doing now. Nice spell shield by Reckless. To absorb that torch from Jinx. Which doesn't seem like it hurt much anyway, but might as well get the mana. Yeah, he's not pulling ahead. Yeah. It is a very straightforward matchup to play. Stay out of his apprehend range. Yep, that is TLDR, the Nar Darius matchup. Oh, Mountain. Trying to make a play with Albus onto Rainover here. A Rainover, I mean, what a career he's had since he moved to Europe. I mean, in Korea, he wasn't known for being a great player. They called him Game Over because he really, you know, that was it. You got him on your team, it was Game Over. Big change for this guy coming to Europe, making a name for himself. Still game over, just in the other direction. 18 and 0 with Fnatic in the regular season. Yeah, that's game over in a good reason. Well, maybe not this game, but we'll see. It's still very close. Fnatic still with the gold lead, but that might change as this turret looks like it could go down fairly soon. And yeah, this was the initial lane of tower. HQ decided not to take down at all, so they really want to keep that lane even, be able to bounce back the ways on. Didn't yeah. feel comfortable playing in a long lane, but. So far, they're hanging out. The gold hasn't really changed all too no. much. He's got the safety of Tom Kench behind him. He also has a pickaxe advantage on the Reckless as far as straight AD is concerned. Uh, the only danger would be a yellow star all in with some gank potential, but they're very happily taking small chunks out of that turret. And those plays on the top lane, that lack of pressure has kind of locked up yellow star too, because he's now stuck dealing in that bot lane, keeping Reckless in lane. But traditionally, we've seen a lot of roams come out of yellow star. Him together with Rainover at this point in the game, you would very often see them roaming, but HQ. They have some really good vision control. Look at those two pink wards and one extra up top. Like the, the base position of pink wards have yeah. been filled. So HQ, a lot better position in this game compared to Lost. I would agree. You know, one interesting thing about this game too is that the kills haven't exactly gone to where the teams would prefer them on. A couple to the junglers, one to the support. All right, both those pink wards. Yay, ward. They're gone. <laughs> I guess so. Well, there's that. And there immediately, immediately HQ actually has to retreat. You feel the pressure. Because they have no vision within their own jungle, which makes an incredible feeling of pressure right there. Because if they stay out of the turret, for all they know, they could be getting Formando. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. Get back to base, <laughs> pick up some items. This does finish it very early. But even to go back and edge. get the wards, it's still dangerous. Unless they can actually see Fnatic yeah. recalling. But if Fnatic plays this right, they will recall and fall. That looks like it's going to be a turret for Fnatic. That is actually something. Zero, that is something EDG does incredibly well when you watch them play. They abuse fog of war to their advantage so much, and it's, I hate it when I see people base in full vision because you just give your opponent so much free information. Yeah. Top level team. That is often the difference. You basically say, hey, you know what? If you want to come to this part of the map, you can. It's fine. You're safe for a little while. That's not something you want to do. HQ looking to respond with a turret of their own. They'll be able to take the top one, but that is their first turret of the game. They do have the two dragons though. And that yep. bot tower could fall down soon too. Yeah, it really could. There's, there's a chance that HQ has held out pretty well from the early game pressure disadvantage they opted into with that dragon. 
the mistakes that Huni granted can almost slingshot AHQ ahead if they are able to win a team fight of some kind. And remember, Westor is a very good assassin split push player on that fist. Whoa, on the gets popped. They're going after him here. Westor gets stunned by that Timbers. Could be in trouble turning around as the teleport comes in for AHQ. Ziv is there as well, too. That's a kill for Westor. Fnatic getting reckless as Reckless tries to escape. They come in, they get a kill, but it looks like they'll pay for it. Jinx Rocket, non-consequential. Hooney flashes. Can oh, he actually no. catch Ziv? No, he can't. He's about to go Meganar. Here comes Tom Kench. Not going to be this able to catch Hooney. <laughs> here comes... You know, he okay. could just pick up Ziff and run after him. He's got that move speed, but it doesn't look like they're going to go for it. The way yeah. Wester turned around there was actually incredibly smart. Like, he saw the teleport, yeah. then he turned around to finish Annie, and then somehow Ziff stayed alive. Maybe too long enough. Impressive play here from AHQ. That's a turret, too, for yeah. AHQ. Fnatic in a lot of trouble now. And this could be the slingshot. AHQ fell back in the early game, and now they're flying ahead of Fnatic because of the mistakes Huni made and that nice play by Westor as well as the globals there enacting the teleport from Ziv and the Tom Kent just to make some safety at the end of this fight. Let's watch that again. Just keep your eyes on here how Westor decides. His teleport is coming behind him. Huni teleports ahead of him, so he has to turn around. They finish off Yellow Star, and then they turn to Reckless. Two for two will be actually a decent trade here, considering that they fight 2v3, but actually ends up just being a, a 1v2 here. Kill trades, and then Ziv still survives. Yeah. Really nice jump to and forces the fight. Barely out range. Or gets the flash, you know. Yeah. So well, I mean, motto. We, Technically, he forced Flash because it was used. <laughs> we talked about Huni. Have you know, no cooldowns, it's Flash. I mean, we talked about Huni waiting, of course, to use that apprehend until the hop started. He didn't that time use it really early, right after he got in, and that made it easy for Ziv to escape. Especially if you look at the weaknesses of this HQ composition, we touched on it in the draft already. No way there at all. But because they're actually still even in the lane, they can put. Whoa! Big Shockwave brings in on an Albus. Albus eats his buddy, keeps him safe. I was gonna say they can put on mid without anything to worry about. Still yeah. have to worry about that shockwave. Well, he's a bit yeah. slimier, but he's alive. That's yeah. the important thing. And these are the trade-offs that Westor makes in almost all of his games. He almost always loses CS in order to try and create kills and pressure on the other side of the map. But mid laners in the LMS are not nearly as good at punishing this as there are at Worlds. Febavent with a 70 CS advantage, only 18 minutes in, and despite the kill, 1300 gold up. Uh oh. Mountain gets slowed down by that undertow, trying to get away. Westor coming from the side, Mountain with the repel. Albus trying to get in there, he's gonna flash over the wall, pick up his friend here. Yellowstar in a lot of trouble, gonna go down. Westor gets the kill, gets taken out though, as Huni comes in, it's a brawl. There's the zone, he's used by Febivim, it's another kill for Rain over. Yeah, still a touch from the side, a lot of members low for Fnatic, that's kills all over for AHQ. Meanwhile, Huni still going out with on, he gets the kill. Four on both sides, it's a top laner battle. Huni trying to catch Ziv, and Ziv just gonna run away. Are they still gonna go in? No. So Couple. four for four. Couple team wow. fight mistakes in these fights though. Febivan flashed into a wall, and then HQ committing so hard to kill the support Yellowstar after he's already used Tibbers. Questionable move there by Westor, spending his ultimate for that, but overall a four for four trade, yep. so. And this is not the controlled game many were expecting after Fnatic strangled out IG yes or two days ago in the first game here at Worlds. This fight in particular, total chaos, really. The annoyance of Tom Kench showing true here, flashing over the wall just to eat, and that prolongs the fight. So yes, Westor went on a bad target, but it was the target his fish landed on, and he's really just trying to get kills to start his goal beat off. The big thing here was the way the front lines were playing. An was really close to resetting this fight, but Huni was at least in the right position to zone him out. Chaos in the backside. And that failed flash. If Evan yeah. went over the wall, he could have killed Mountain, but Mountain had time to get out of spider form. In that case, turn around and actually finish him off. So Ziv has also has been shown really good distance management. HQ's going to want to fight over this dragon right away. Yep, they do. They don't want them to get it. Fnatic gets it anyway. There's going to be a fight. Fish on the yellow star yet again. On coming in from the side. On a post. Rain over. Trying to get to him with that Ragnarok. A kill comes in already for Fnatic. Ziv getting low. Finally, Albus so healthy with that Greyhound. Not anymore. That's a double kill Ooh. for Reckless. Yellow star finally gets taken out. It's a triple kill, though, for Reckless. And finally, Huni takes him. There's a double kill for Ziv, though, on the other side. It's nearly an ace once again, a big brawl, but this time two for three in favor of Fnatic. LMS teams, in particular AHQ, are never willing to give up a dragon for nothing. So yes, they no. go in really hard despite the dragon being down. And also, we just talked about Westor's target selection. He again all ins Yellow Star and actually does not have the burst yet to even one shot. So he is a complete.
non factor in this fight, and it negates the advantage the other members of AHQ may have had. Yeah, watch that again. again. If he had a Zonias, this is an okay move, but because he doesn't stun into Boomerang and one shot, West are completely useless Man. in this fight. And on he really needs some shockwave. healing. Good talk away from Feverman. Yeah, and then you can see the Super Mega Death Rocket almost take them out for on, but Feverman sits at full health for pretty much the whole fight, and Ziv is unable to dodge the outside of the Darius Q on that occasion, which you know, ends up trading the shutdown gold to Huni. Speaking of Darius, he's getting some items, he's getting some kills. Huni much more relevant now than he was a couple minutes ago. Only a thousand gold, roughly behind 900 right now, and more importantly, he finished his core build. Black Lever and Deadman's Blade, that's all he needs in these team fights for yep. Darius, so he doesn't really care that he's behind Ziv in particular, because Fnatic as a whole, as a team, they team fight way better. So HQ need to go back to this 1-3-1 one one split push again and find individual skirmishes because Fizz is one of the strongest 1v1 assassins that they have here in this game. You know, I gotta say too, Albus is not making a huge difference at the moment on this Tom Kent. I mean, when it comes to a big 5v5 team fight, he's just kind of walking around a little bit. Particularly that last one when Fnatic had the setup. It's yeah. really evident. Tom Kench has some nice capabilities of coming in on the backside of chaotic fights and creating a difference because of the duration in which he can make someone untargetable. But really, if Fnatic sets up that well and HQ jumps in, it's not good. Yeah, good point there, because compare, compare the utility of a Tibbers versus an Abyssal Voyage. Abyssal Voyage is good if you can relocate between lanes. Again, 1v1 split push. Get your more members to a different lane quicker than Fnatic can expect it. Whereas in team fights, and he takes the cake right there. An AoE oh, yeah. four-man Tibbers can decide to fight. Abyssal Voyage? Not so much. We're only 22 minutes in, and Feverben has nearly 100 CS over Westdoor. That's insane. The kills are even. Westdoor has been trying to row and make plays, but the goal difference is 2,100 in that mid lane. And if an Orianna gets ahead, it shuts down Assassin. We're also averaging one kill per minute, something we did not expect from Fnatic coming into this match. HQ we did. Fnatic, not so much. It was such a tactical game for Fnatic in their match against IG. Here they are playing really crazy, honestly, being so aggressive, being overly aggressive at times, wanting to get in there for the skirmishing, and AHQ is answering. They're saying, all right, you want to fight? We'll fight too. Yeah, Fnatic is defaulting back on a lot of really old habits yeah. in this game. So much of the spring split team was undisciplined, risky plays, and they completely cleaned it up for three to four months. But for whatever reason in this game, AHQs has brought the old Fnatic back. Well, I mean, they're lucky. Fnatic is, it, they're barely, barely making it work at this point. But this game is so close, AHQ could still turn this around anytime. That's the way, honestly, if you look at a team that is this crisp at Fnatic, you can take two approaches. Either you play the same crisp game style that you're not used to, or you bring them down to your level and you try and beat them with experience. <laughs> and that is the, the approach, controlled chaos here from AHQ. But they'll need some fancy moves right now, because Fnatic, their fundamentals are still better. Their vision control, especially on this Baron buff, is just a lot more advanced than what HQ is used to. Well, they're finally Fnatic, that is, getting a little bit of side wave control back in that top lane. We'll see what they can do in the bot lane with Huni here. This Ziv, this Gnar is still pretty fed. Yeah, and Frozen Mallet. If he gets in split push scenarios, he can completely dominate Huni and then have yes. some teleport advantage. You can see he's consistently pushed up on that side of the map. Yep. Split push is almost set up for HP. They just need to get this wave in neutral or pushed in and then have a perfect 1 3 1. Unless West are basic. Now, Dragon is coming up in a Both minute base. 30. Just everyone base. Yeah, because Why Dragon's push? coming up in a minute 30, man. Let's, you gotta get ready to fight again. Yeah, let's team fight that Dragon, because our composition is totally built around that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's exactly the way AHQ plays. Whether or not their composition is built around it or not, the Dragon is where you team fight. <laughs> and if you're not ready for that team fight, you are not winning those games. It's like That's in that the way they're 300, thinking. man. It's like, this is where we fight. This is where, well, we, we might die too, actually, but well, they'll die a little bit. <laughs> That's how it's been going for AHQ. 11 to 11, something's got to give. <laughs> Like, what is your profession? And Tom Kench is like, cooking. Like, <laughs> no, you're supposed to say war. Sorry. Does like eating. Eating. He, so, he does have a certain amount of swagger to his walk. He Tom does. Kench. He does. He has a, a jolly swagger, I would say. On though. I agree. Outside <laughs> of all the swagger. Yeah, I'm glad you agree there, Jeff. Has, <laughs> had some really good positioning overall. And Kiting, even though not many people have been peeling for him, he's done a decent amount of damage with those AoE rockets in fight, and has really dodged quite a few, you know, shockwaves and just sidestepped a lot of the abilities. So keep your eyes yep. on him for the team fights. Westor is the big name, but Ziv and Honor are the carries of this team, through and through. They also 
became a much more powerful team when Mountain started jungling for the team and Albus moved down for support. So really, Westor is a cog in the AHQ machine and he's trying to fulfill his role right here as a team fight flanker, but he needs to make the right decision. This time, if he pulls a backline move, at least he has the Zoni's Hourglass. So this fight should be more interesting. Meganar is in the top lane as the dragon spawns. So they have a very finite window here. And the ports, though, the jungle's on Krugs coming back right now. So very delayed on tempo here. Maybe they panic again. Fnatic going for this dragon. Can the steal happen? Oh, he gets it! Mountain steals the dragon. That's not bad. bad. Don't have to fight for it. You can just steal it. That works. Why not? Genius. <laughs> All right. Honestly, one the, step ahead of yeah. us, Jack. <laughs> he had flash. He had the repel. It wasn't respected by Fnatic. They didn't use any spells to zone out. Honestly, I think they were too ready for AHQ to just pile in and fight them again. Yeah. They kind of forgot about the obvious play. That's the Elise steal, who has an execute, and therefore can outsmite your jungler. I think you're absolutely right. Well, stun on the zip. This may have not been wise to come down. You're going to take a lot of damage. Goes Megan at the last second. Oh, here comes Westor looking for some kills. Misses his ultimate, though. Fade away from Reckless. Can he survive the playful trickster? He can with the flash. Mountain still harassing that oh, AD carry. Oh, there's the damage! And there's the kill for Reckless. Meanwhile, a ton of kills for Fnatic as they chase away Age. Yuzef forced the flash. Huni didn't even hit the E. They can turn onto this Baron whenever they want. Such good juking from Reckless. And he has faith in his own mechanical ability. You can see he upgraded his alacrity boots because he Smart. knows he has the mechanics to sidestep. And this just gives him that little extra edge. While everyone was trying to kill Reckless, the rest of Fnatic was cleaning up on the backside. And that's the game changing moment in this game. Yeah, such a fantastic oh. play there. Ziv yeah. coming in to harass. But Fevin should have the Zokano. Who does she get back to the Baron? That goes down. I got it. If we see that again. I want to see if he actually shielded that fish from Westor. I wonder. I think he did, think and that means the fish will drop down. If you have the spell shield on, the fish will not latch onto it. It was right on him. I mean, he must have, right? Yeah, it looks like Westor did the dash to him, and then fish right away to kind of cancel the cast animation, yeah, which I normally so. locks it on. But Reckless, I think, saw it coming. We'll see in the replay. And then somehow, the back end of that fight got completely slaughtered we didn't by Reynov and Mooney. Yeah. You can just imagine that Olaf and... Uh, Darius had just had a fun time walking away. <laughs> the, everybody was looking at Reckless, including oh HQ. Boy. Okay, here we yeah, go. Brothers. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, it was a nice start by Ziv, considering how caught he was, to get the Nar stun into the wall. And let's see Westor. It was point blank right on Reckless, but doesn't stick because of the spell shield. And the almost start does yeah. get taken out here. But and again, on the bottom end of, of your fight. screen, you don't see it, but Arn is just getting wrecked there in the fight. Good shockwave oh on Fevivan. And oh. again, nobody is peeling for Arn. The, comp the composition is built actually around a hypercarry Jinx, but nobody's helping him in these fights. Yeah, saying good luck to Jinx and like running off is not generally the best way to keep your ADC alive. Yeah, and now Reckless has a QSS, so even if he doesn't spell shield the fish, he can QSS to drop it and still walk away. Not to mention Febivan is kind of sneakily carrying this game. The amount of pressure he's put and CS he's picked up while Westor is attempting shenanigans is really giving Fnatic a huge edge. He's had some great shockwaves and team fights, and Fnatic uses that Baron already to take out the tier two turret in mid. Heaven has just overall become a very consistent force on Fnatic, and they can just lead on him even when one of these side lanes perhaps doesn't get the win they require. You can always rely on Fevivan to have at least even or head CS. And then he can even just shine in team fights. So Fnatic overall using that to their advantage. Pretty sure this is the largest mid lane CS discrepancy. Get it? Yeah, it's huge. It's massive. Just like the massive damage going down on that mid lane turret. Oh, wait, you. The desperation is real, man. Are they going to fight it? Not just yet. The turret goes down. Fnatic moves in with that Baron buff to try to go for the inhibitor. Huni tried to flash play there. Didn't work out, but they get the inhibitor. There is, there is some synergy on that basketball Darius with Oriana. There can be. Well, Sibiralt is down and the Darius flash, so HQ wouldn't mind the fight here. I Whoa. wonder if they go. Oh, Yellowstar has to flash away. Huni, or Zip rather, gets an Naro. They pull him in anyway. There's the fish on the rain over. Still, the carries for Fnatic are okay, and that is going to mean the damage. Turns around. Double kill, though, for Ahn. That's He's the beginning of the resets. Excited. That's right. Restore getting the kill. Triple kill. And that is nearly going to be an ace. It will be the ace as Fevin finally gets taken out. Kill for Tom Kench, and AHQ gets a near clean ace. I love the way Ahn plays this fight. After his first kills, many Jinx players would just storm forward to get resets. He actually yep. sidestepped one of the ball movements from Fevivan, then went in for the play. Played At the same. end, we see how much damage that ball can do, because this could be an entirely different fight. But overall, Fnatic, 
They stayed a little too long. What a massive turn in this game. Yeah. That was such a huge gold swing. Not only are they getting two turrets off of this and an ace, those were shutdown kills on a lot of people. So that's an extra ignition of gold into that team. It's now a 1,000 gold game despite all of the punishment they've taken early. All right, let's check this one out. How did this all end up happening? We have to remember that the flash on Darius was down as well as the Sivirald, so they can't actually disengage. Then, Shockwave doesn't have much impact because of the pull by Westdoor, and On is untouched since Darius can flash to get on him and because the Shockwave was used elsewhere. Yeah, that four-man stun from Ziv, even though he just hit one guy with the ulti, the follow-up there hits four people, stun swords people, and then On with some good respect there for the Oriana ball from Febben. Yeah. They just clean up that fight, and we see just how important the cooldowns are for Fnatic's lineup in these fights. You know, I feel like we've been seeing Huni all game long taking these excessively risky plays, like trying to get the flash engaged. It's flashy, but you're already killing the inhibitor. Just be happy with that. You always have to see what does that play generate in terms of objectives. Yeah. What, if the inhibitor's already down, why would you flash it? And then you look at the, at the opportunity cost of that play. What can we lose if this goes wrong? Apparently well, a lot. They lose the Baron buff, they lose the fight, they lose some turrets, but they come right back and take this bot lane tier two. So Fnatic, despite the game getting a little bit closer, seems to have bounced back quite nicely. They've got the waves where they want them too. Yeah, that was actually the first negative Baron power play of the tournament when Fnatic had Baron. They yep. lost gold in the eventual exchange, but this dragon is now huge. AHQ, if they get this, start the timer for fifth dragon. Can Westdorf flank? Will that be a be huge big. question in this fight. He's gonna try. Oh. Oh, no, that's a ton of no, damage. That might Keep be it right flank. there. Okay, well, there's the answer to the question. Can they steal this dragon, though? Mountain, I don't think he's even gonna try it. It's only second dragon for Fnatic. It's a big one, but AHQ can let this go. Yeah, they needed to. Febben took Westdoor to half health before the fight. 600 began. ability yeah. power right now on Febben already. Slam that door. No more five dragons, at least for another 12 minutes. They HQ wanted to wait that long. That's a long time, man. I mean, that would make this one of the longest games we've seen yet if it goes that far. Fnatic, meanwhile, they've still got that pressure in the mid lane for the moment anyway. That inhibitor isn't going to come up for a little while yet. Probably not until after Baron comes up. Do you think that sounds right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Going to be a while here. True. Okay. Baron will be up. It's going to be a little bit hard for HQ to defend because they have to keep the mid lane pressured, which has been so easily pressured by Febben up until now. Yeah. Also, Febben just in these team fights, his shields. He's about to rank it up again. They're averaging around 450 to 460 HP that he can give off. Decent amount of cooldown reduction here. So that that means a lot in these repetitive, in these slow extended fights, where if Fnatic can just avoid getting caught and just tight, they are just in such a prime position to take this game, regardless of what the gold actually means here. Oh, well, HQ just taking care of their side of the map right now. They've cleared out most of the wards. They've gotten a little bit of vision around the Baron. What do you do if you're Fnatic? How do you make sure you secure this Baron? You ward your flanks. That is the most important part right here. You can't get into any situation with either Ziv or Westor comes from behind because both of them are either tanky enough or have the ability to stall you long enough, whether it's a Ziv ultimate or general tankiness or a Zonius Hourglass from Westor for the rest of the HQ lineup to collapse. Yeah, Uni and waiting to teleport in. More importantly, Fnatic needs to calm down. Yeah. They have continually gotten an edge from smart play and then lost it with some foolish, uh, almost nervous looking play. Yeah, Huni waiting for Do there almost in the bot lane and it's getting him upset. Seen a couple of aggressive flashes from him where it just wasn't necessary at all. Yeah, I mean, they've. They've looked needlessly desperate in some of their plays today, needlessly frantic in some of their decisions, and I feel like this would be a much bigger lead for Fnatic if they had just played things a little bit more calmly. And Albus finds a pink ward. As well as warding their flanks, I actually think it's good for Fnatic if they commit to running at someone. Yep. Mm. Every time there's a Sivir composition with Olaf and Darius, I literally just call it a run at the team composition. Makes sense. AHQ actually doesn't have that great disengage. When he has to teleport. Oh man, has to teleport, but he takes it back up by the Baron. If they can use this to clear some wards, yeah. get some vision, they might be able to turn to their advantage. Get some vision control, yeah. find someone, Sivirald, Oriana, Distortion, and just go. Yeah. Oh, they are going, not even bothering to clear all those wards. Baron getting lower, and HQ a little bit out of position here. 
Alvesing it coming in, takes a big chunk from Febivin. They need to turn here. Baron's not dying yeah, soon enough. Go. Here they go. Silver all popped already. Febivin on the outside of the fight doing the damage. Ziff trying to get back there. A kill for him already. Huni not really doing a lot. And now HQ, they've got Fnatic on the run. Reckless has to pop that spell shield. Big shockwave though. They could maybe turn it around. No, it's a double kill for Ziff even though he is out of the fight. Fnatic, though, they fought it to a bit of a standstill, but I think AHQ still came out ahead. Yeah, AHQ may very well win this game in tremendous comeback fashion. Febivan is doing all that he can to make sure Fnatic doesn't lose this game. Specifically in that play, if you're going to just run at them, why get yourself low at Baron in the first place? That By starting it, they only weaken themselves for the eventual fight, and they ran headlong into Meganar. You have to be able to time it so he's not Mega. Fnatic, yeah. they start a fight right now with Imperfect vision right now. They can collapse on by Mega Nar. Look at that ulti from Ziv here. Yeah. Even a five-man shockwave is not going to make it because Albus did a really good job there, eating his AD carry on on max range damaging. And at this point, HQ have win the fight. They actually overstand a little bit into the shockwave, make it a little easy. Mountain jumps for no reason at all. They could have disengaged here, but overall, yeah. this is the very few times we see Fnatic play into their opponent's hands the way they have been doing this game. Yeah. They. There was perfect rage bar management by Ziv right there. And Fnatic, if they're going to be making that play, they need to be able to track the rage bar of Ziv as well as just have better overall vision control. But they are playing a little bit frantic. And now they actually don't get to make controlled, reliable plays because the game is even. They're actually needing to take some risks now if they want to actually win this game. And look at how heavy they invested in vision. Silver ulti, Talisman of Ascension, and Righteous Glory. If you have that much itemization and picks invested in movement speed, then you really have to make it work. And by the time you start losing the fights, the movement speed becomes irrelevant. Because yeah. you do not want to run into your own demise. Yeah. Trying to hide in the Baron pit for the moment. They're going to start Baron, actually. No vision right there for HQ. Going for it. They need to be ready to turn again, but taking more Baron damage. I feel like we've seen this we before. Talked about. That's right. Are the ultimates up? Huni tries to pull an Albus. Doesn't get it. On doing some damage from the side. They back off a little bit earlier this time. Potential rotation here mid, though. Fnac do have an incredibly quick Baron, but... This is what they... S it seems like a Panic Baron to me, and Panic Barons are very symptomatic to poor shot calling, something yeah. we haven't yeah. seen from Fnatic at all. Oh Look boy. at the mid lane. The well, standoff. Westdoor is pushing without teleport, so we'd have to make it down really quickly in Fnatic. Their Baron's actually not that quick, so he might make it back for this fight. Ziv does not have Megan He's there this already. Time. Fnatic is low on two tanks. He's back there going in there trying to rush down Ziv and Mountain, but here comes on and Albus as well. West door, Playful Trickster doesn't get the damage. Fnatic still posturing around this Baron. The dance continues. Oh, I'm very confident in his supporter. He gets grabbed there by the apprehend, but Albus says, well, I'll just eat my AD carry and it'll be K. Yeah. Spits him out again. And hesitation there on Fnatic's side as too. They could have engaged on Arm, but they're so afraid of that time Kench devour, they really don't want to commit to it. This game is so close, but Westor putting the pressure on the mid lane. When he comes back to clear, he doesn't have that teleport yet, though. And now HQ going for that crucial fourth dragon. It's looking better and better for HQ, but this is really anyone's game. It's become so tense here at 38 minutes. Yeah. But in terms Certainly. of styles, HQ is forcing Fnatic to take to dance to their tune. This is HQ's preferred playstyle overall. This is not what we've been used to seeing from Fnatic. Well, HQ, they've got four dragons now. They've got pressure on. Now you do have to get a bit frantic if you're Fnatic, you know, right? Now you do have to try to take some of those risky fights. You cannot let HQ get that fifth dragon. Six minutes Absolutely. remain. Ziv has also been showing what a good top laner he can really be. Yeah, he is having a phenomenal game on NAR 8, 2, and 11. This spacing just in general, rage bar management and spacing on NAR is the two most important things you can do, and he does it beautifully. Every fight so far he's come in, with at least a good solid NAR ulti if he wasn't follow-up stun. And his rage has always been ready. There's fairly limited disengage for AHQ to prevent Fnatic from running at them. But pretty much every time Fnatic has tried to group in a team fight, he's landed a massive Meganar against the assaulting members of Fnatic. Yeah, Ziff really has gotten so big here. They're going to go in again, trying to jump onto Ziff. Rain over really fast. They're going to turn onto Albus. They've got him a bit separated, but he's still tanky with that gray health. Going to go down, though, and Rain over barely, barely lives. This could open up a Baron, though, for AHQ. Oak popped out by Westor. Devin pops that Zonia. Zaps. Can he live through it right in the flame choppers? Big shockwave, though. AHQ still with the edge as Rain over and the rest of Fnatic make a run for it. There's a double kill for Westor. This one looks like it could be over. Yellowsword turns for the stun. It's not enough. It's going to be another near ace. Poonie wasn't even there.
Fnatic, they went for fully unload on the Toad, but it wasn't enough. Look at how tanky Albus was. He stayed long enough to trade his life almost for rain over on that jungle Olaf. And where was Huni who had an entire fight? Yeah, yeah. not That's there. Really it. So many mistakes from Huni this game, but honestly, AHQ has capitalized so well after such a large deficit. They're going to look to take a surprise win over Fnatic. The death timers are very long, and Huni has to pull a miracle here if he's going to keep Fnatic in this game. Flash is available for Huni. This may be the time he actually wants TP. to use it. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. He tries to go in. There goes the first Nexus turret. Ziv has done such a great job carrying this game back to Meganar. One last time throws Huni against the Nexus. That AHQ is about to take out. AHQ takes down Fnatic. AHQ bounce back from their day one upset against Cloud9 and make this group really interesting. Yeah, they do. Wow. And Fnatic, phenomenal first game of Worlds. Second game, like we talked about, going back onto some of those bad habits, it's definitely, I don't want to say a worrying trend, but it's something to be a bit concerned about. Isn't it, guys? Isn't it one and the same? <laughs> it is. All right. We can just use that. Yeah. The fact that Fnatic defaulted to some of their older habits. Especially Huni. Huni had a Huni very especially. poor performance. That was the beginning of the loss of their lead. I mean, that NAR matchup, again, it proves that it may not be worth thinking that Barry is so early on first rotation on west side because every team just has a comfortable answer for it that doesn't really give too much yeah. away. And I mean, I still just can't get over how needlessly frantic Fnatic looked, especially Uni, making these plays he didn't need to. I think the best example of that, to me anyway, they were killing the inhibitor. He flashes to try to get some big flash engage. Why? Why do you need to even try that? That's where the whole game turned around. Maybe yeah. that was a team call of some kind, because almost could be. Almost at the second Huni flashed in, Reckless also burned his Sivir ultimate, and okay. then they finished off the inhibitor. But because of that play, that's when AHQ turned it on. But not Either to way. discredit only Fnatic here, but got to give props where props is due, especially to On in these team fights. He yeah. had some really immaculate positioning because in the earlier stages of the game, Westor was flanking, Ziv was going in, his support wasn't really watching him. Who was peeling for on? Really nobody. Yeah. yeah. Tom Kench. Tom Albus. Kench. That was it. But even he was, he was sometimes successful. Bit... Dude, we got a win for Tom Kench at Worlds. Yeah. How about that? No yeah. bar, though. Oh, no bar. We'll Maybe have to tomorrow. wait until next year. Yeah. No, but really, <laughs> AHQ, we got to see a lot of the ways in which they won the LMS and why they were considered to be pretty good coming into Worlds yeah. right here. Ziv. Fantastic top laner. We saw through his rage bar management, positioning and spacing that it was spectacular. On great team fight positioning. And Westor, he performed mostly like he did within the LMS. Roaming, falls behind in gold, still able to win team fights with the rest of his team because they do play cohesively. He just needs to stop focusing those supports, though. <laughs> You know, what mid laner doesn't love to insta-gib supports, though? It, well, if you insta-gib them, it, I'm okay with it. But that's very true. often, he just left Yellow Star and that sliver of health. And that's where Fnatic actually took control back of the game. But he was adamant, at least. You know, if at first you don't succeed, try it, try it, try again. Yeah, but at some point, you got to admit that <laughs> DFG is not in the game anymore. You got to play it a little bit slower. You got to prioritize those targets a little bit better. But for him, it's got to feel good to get a win on the Fizz. It's his primary champion. Yeah, it's necessary that he's able to win on Fizz. Because if yeah. teams are letting it through in the ban phase, he's almost knocked himself into a corner that he has to play that. Westor is a player that does not play many champions, so mm -hmm. he's not executing on his core top champions. He's not doing anything. It's it's put true. so much pressure on IG, though, in this group. <laughs> Overall, nobody, like, everybody expected Fnatic to take the 6-0 and oh, and then the remaining members to fight for second place after the first few days of the tournament. This throws this group entirely wide open. I mean, we've got Cloud9 on top of this group right mm -hmm. now with the 2-0. It's insane. This, yeah. this world is already getting better. Looks like we're getting ready for another interview this time with uh, some members of AHQ. Got Ziv there. And again, Ziv ended that game 8 2 and 15 on that NAR. Mm -hmm. Was a big, big difference in uh, what ended up giving AHQ the game. Because again, we talked about Fnatic. Nothing was really stopping them from running in onto the squishy carries of AHQ, but Ziv was. He was there. Perfect NAR ults nearly every time. Big difference maker in that one. Yeah, absolutely. Ziv played great. That's right. And so AHQ are on the board. So let's send it over to Shox for more on their first win here at Worlds. Thank you. Thank you very much as I'm joined here by Ziv and Max, who's assisting for the translation. First up, a humongous congratulations on that victory for you guys. Fantastic game. First up, what does it mean after coming into Worlds as an underdog in this group to take this win off one of the favorites? First, 
然后呃，你们在小组里面目前是看起来是黑马的姿势，然后呃，击败了 Fnatic。那你现在你们现在对这这种感觉有什么感受如何？呃，就是觉得很开心，因为毕竟我们第一场打的并不是很好，所以这算我们的开壶这样子。We're really happy to get this win because we didn't play that well during our first match, and this is our first win, so we're happy to have that. Well, you guys played very well in this match. Uh, Ziv, we know you're the Summer Split MVP over in the LMS, and we were looking forward to what you could do here. Tell me about this matchup versus Huni, one of the best top laners in EU. We know that you're MVP next match, and you played very well in this match. You played very well. 你对跟呼尼对线这点有什么想法？跟他对他的表现如何？你的表现如何？呃，我觉得呼尼在对线上就是表现非常凶，所以我觉得他很容易在一些失误之后马上想把他打回来，所以我觉得这是我们很容易找到他失误的地方。Um, I think h u n i plays really aggressive, and when he makes a mistake, he always try to get it back. Um, so whenever he makes a mistake and try to be even more aggressive, we capitalize on that. Can you explain a little more? Was that the key to beating Fnatic? Did they get overconfident in the mid game? Uh, 想请教可以解释一下说，呃，是因为你觉得 Huni 是不是太自信了，所以这是你们打败他们的其中一个原因？呃，其实也不太算是，算是我们团队上配合比较好。Not entirely. We think we had a better uh team fights and better chemistry. You had incredible team fights and incredible uh, shot calling at the end of that game. So congratulations with this. What does this mean for you guys? How far do you think you can go in this group, knowing that you just took down Fnatic? Uh, 你们的确是团队打得很好。那你们已经拿下这个胜利了。那接下来就是这些比赛，你觉得你们在小组的出现机会大不大？然后对小组的看法？嗯，那我觉得我们只要在保持这状态，我们的出现几率就很高。然后小组上 IG 好像状态也不太好，所以 C 九有点就是超乎预料的强，所以我们觉得下一场对上 C 九，我们要认真对讨论那个选角之类的。I think、uh, if we capitalize on this and if we keep our condition up, we, there's a good chance that we'll get out of the group.、Um, it seems like IG isn't conditioned that well either, but、uh, C9 has surprised, Cloud9 has surprised everybody's expectations. And now we're paying more attention to him. We'll be very careful of preparing our next、uh, match against them. Well, it's certainly possible. The group is wide open. Congratulations and thank you so much for the interview, guys. It's bonkers over here in Paris. Wrap it up. I feel like bonkers is a good word for it. <laughs> when, right? when Cloud9 is sitting 2-0 atop the group. That's not even our best team from NA. That's our seventh best team. Damn. Come at, NA, come at us, come at us. NA, NA strongest region. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well then,、uh, I, I, I humbly suggest something I've been suggesting for a long time, which is that we move to. You know, we had Battle of the Atlantic in the off season. Pacific scrim. There it is. Korea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one versus one, two versus two. Let's do it. I like this it. idea. I'll pitch it to the <laughs> execs.、Cool. I'll pitch it to the execs. It's catchy. <laughs> China wants nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> Keep us out of it. All right, but in all. Series says this game, you know, early on we were looking at it saying, oh, okay, fanatic, typical fanatic. They're building an early lead, 2K, very early on, and then AHQ clawed their way back into it. Ziv, that man on the screen there, was a huge role in that as well. Why you got to do this to me? I just said fanatic would go 6-0, and then AHQ actually shows up. No, I was really glad to see that AHQ. Got it together. This is more, much more what we were expecting from this team, not the pitiful first game that they showed us. And you know, Ziv had a great role, and I will talk about it. But Arn, they put so much into it. They refused to knock the turret down because they want to get levels and farm onto this guy. And when it gets to late game, and Arn, whatever you want to call him, he is an amazing AD carry. But what I love about the draft here is they pick Tom Kench. Yeah. They pick Tom Kench for On. Every time On is in trouble because there's an Olaf and an Annie, they're gonna run straight at him. He's like, "Oh my God, he's gonna be there! Oh my God!" And he clenches for the Kench, and he gets inside the belly, and then he just runs away. It was so good. I loved Albus in these fights.、Yeah. The way he was picking him up and running, the direction he was running was always really good. He was never putting him in a bad position, and he even used it to bait a couple times. So the way that this Tom Kench was played out, I think, was a great debut and showcase of what the champion can do. And I don't think this is the last that we've seen of him, especially in T2 
teams that love protecting their AD carry. Yeah, with these low mobility hyper carries, yeah. Tom Kench becomes incredibly relevant. And you could see that this is something they had really practiced coming into this match that they knew exactly. Albus was so aware of cooldowns and when he could eat the jinx and when he could spit the jinx back out safely. And let's talk about what that does to the rest of the team fight because all of a sudden, Mid laner, top laner, no need to peel. You can just dive the heck out of the enemy backline, and that's what we saw time and time again. Westall flying in on his fizz. You have this Meganar nailing people with a wallop. It wasn't even the Meganar half the time, and across the board, AHQ thrive in chaos, and that is exactly what those fights were. Exactly. It's so hard to go for proper target selection when there's a NAR in the middle of your team, a 40% CDR fizz, and that's when the breakpoint started happening, where he's able to playful trickster, Zonia's Q, playful trickster again. And then if you go for the Jinx, Tom Kench has that person's back. And then hitting the Tom Kench doesn't seem that useful either. So really, going after this composition was extraordinarily difficult, not to mention just to add icing on top of the cake, at least can repel. You didn't have a really solid target to go after, except for Ziv, but he got ahead and he got to a tanky point. So AHU has showed us some of what we're looking for here. They finally showed up, as you said, Monty, in this game. Now let's flip to the other side, because Fnatic, we were expecting them to do well. This yeah. is a team that everyone's expecting to do well, if not finish first in this group. What have we learned about them after this game? Their mid laner is really good. <laughs> like, really, really good. He was 130 CS up. He dictated the pace of the lane. He nailed some shockwaves. Sure, late game team fighting got difficult, but I think it's because of the reasons we listed. Mm. He is a very good player. He Final is. Thoughts? Now, he also had a blind pick for Fizz into him, so he did have some more opportunities. I'd love to see HQ get some more Ari in there, which is one of Westor's champions, a little safer in that blind pick. But man, Fnatic, uh, I think we're seeing over the course of this tournament, no one really knew what this patch was, 518. And I think we're learning that there are a lot of, there are a lot of options against Darius. Yes. And I think we're gonna see, I mean, starting in the next few days, much lower priority on that pick. All right, well, let's pull up the standing to see how things have changed after today's games. Group A had the day off, so CLG remains at the top 2-0, followed by the Flash Wolves and Koo Tigers tied for second. Then in Group B, it's clear skies for Cloud9, who are flying high above HQ, Fnatic, and IG. SK Telecom controls Group C with a perfect 3-0, while EDG settles in second. Finally, in Group D, KT Rolster and Origin are undefeated, while LGD and TSM are still looking for their first win. A big part of C9's second win was one fight that got I am uh, Visitor on Twitter who writes, Sneaky and Incarnation, that was a beautiful dragon fight by Cloud9. Let's check out your world's big play of the day. There's a kill there, Sneaky. Could start getting the kills. Kakao with one, though. Balls does go down during the middle of all that. IG trying to turn it around, but it looks like C9 has a triple kill for Sneaky. See how Incarnation and Sneaky do work here. Whoa. Gets the static ship crit as well as the dunk here. And Incarnation actually doesn't have the perfect ult, but it still zones Kakao and Rookie off to the side a little bit. I mean, this fight to me just showcased the strength of those two players, given all the things we talked about with balls having been behind and fighting to even stay relevant in the game. They have to rely and fall back on these two, these two carries so much to carry them through these games. It was a great core. They had a great laning phase as well. Both of them were about 40, 50 CS up between Incarnation and Sneaky and they were able to fall back on their shoulders and allow them to win the game. I did think that team fight was a great showcase of the position that Sneaky can have on that team and how he's been a consistent threat throughout the split. Even when his team isn't doing too well, he still holds positions like that and holds his ground. Well, if you want to see more plays like that, make sure to meet us back here tomorrow for the final day of week one. We'll be starting the day off in Group D as TSM challenges China's LGD Gaming. Then it's on to KT Rolster versus Europe's Origin. After that, Invictus will face off against AHQ Esports. The action gets underway at 2 p.m. Central European time, 5 a.m. Pacific. So mark your calendars. Looking at the lineup, though, gentlemen, which of these games are you keeping your eye on to close out our week? CLG Flash Wolves. That's the one I'm looking at personally, because I think that CLG might have what it takes to close it out against the Flash Wolves and, and uh, sorry, Koo Tigers, Koo Tigers, Koo. Koo. Yeah. Man, the Tigers, <laughs> Wolves. This is the Tigers, Wolves. They, are, they already beat Flash There's Wolves. too many I want to relive that. I want to relive that. I'm going to go watch the replay later. But yeah, Koo Tigers versus CLG, because I think that in Koo's current state and what I've been hearing about their scrims very recently, I think that CLG is going to be the team to actually come out on top of Group A. Definitely possible. Uh, I'm looking forward to the KT 
origin matchup just because you, we have these two 2-0 teams. Both of them have been drafting very intelligently. I'm really just looking for the pick, forward to the pick and ban phase of that game in particular. See, I'm confused right now because I don't know whether I want to watch IG play or LGD. I don't really want to watch either of them play if they continue to play like they're Spot, playing. it's okay to want to watch a team from a different region. <laughs> it is, I promise I, you. But it's because I'm perplexed right now. I just don't know if there's a complete misread on where power lies within the world of League of Legends and I was fooled the whole time on whether they just haven't showed up. So I want to keep an eye on the Chinese team, see if they can get it together. I'm with you. The KT Origin game is going to be very interesting to say the least. Well, now for myself and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching and stay right there for another episode of Worlds Tonight in just 15 minutes. First match is going to be an amazing one. It's China's Edward Gaming versus South Korea's SK Telecom T1. That's a trade kill back in pawn. Now stuck on top of the dragon. Faker gets his first kill of the game. And it still trades back in fourth. But EDG are routed. Faker picks up the kill. Mako's maxed easily. And there's really not much that Amazing Gate can do on this one. Pawn pops yielding for a bit of damage. So needs to buy some time. SKT undaunted. Take down Edward Gaming. H2K pick up their first win at Worlds. Custom is live. Useful for KT. They get a Zonzi. Now he's going to fight Arrow. It's going to be close. Arrow! Chain of Corruption comes across. But only two kills. Now three kills. Picked up Acorn. Jumps in. Tries to pick up a little bit of something. Score will go down. KT 2 0 to start out their World Championship. It's kills on each side. So far, though, two for four. Beautiful wall. Eggs bring that game. Great egg. Double kill for Soaz. Ball throw in. Throw in so we throw in. Balls does go down during the middle of all that. IG trying to trip her up, and it looks like C9 has enough. Triple kill for Sneaky. The damage from, whoa, the damage from his Seer and from Sneaky is so big. Double kill for his Z already. And they complete the 2-0 already at Worlds. A lot of trouble, gonna go down. Westor gets the kill, gets taken out though. As Uni comes in, it's a brawl. Fnatic are okay, and that is gonna be the damage. Turns around, double kill though for Ani. He's beginning of the resets. Right. That's right, Westor again, the kill, triple kill. AHQ still with the edge, has rain over the rest of Fnatic. Make a run for it, there's a double kill for Westor. AHQ takes down Fnatic.